And so the company really started out of a space of necessity. My son was diagnosed with ADHD when he was seven. And because of my experiences in, in battling with mental health issues and prescription drug addiction and, you know, accidental drug overdoses and two failed suicide attempts and, you know, just really hitting the, the that rock bottom place, I wanted to ensure that my son didn't have that same experience, right? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Ryan Roundtree, also known as Tree the Creator. And today is an extraordinary day. I'm heading to chop it up with an awesome, awesome, extraordinary brother of mine, Quentin Vinny. I'm not even exactly sure when I when I met Quentin Vinny. I mean, and probably, I'm, I'm gonna say it was high school. I'm gonna say it was officially high school, um, Milford Mill Academy. And Quentin, man, Quentin was always, always an awesome dude. Always cool on the other side of the pillow. Always could chop it up with him. And then, like I say, later on down the line, you know, into, you know, becoming adults after the fact of, you know, graduating from high school and hitting the real world. Quentin got into the, in, into the fitness world. This is actually before I got into the fitness world um, and actually drew off of his energy with it. I watched him, watched him grind, watched him get his body together and I was inspired and I tightened myself up as well. But come to find out, uh, my brother, you know, wound up dealing with some, some depression and dealing with uh, some mental issues in which, in which he fi actually did not follow through with, you know, doing the bodybuilding show, which, in which he had planned to do. So he ended up attempting suicide a couple times, being on all types of medication uh, for anxiety, depression, brother now has an awesome product in equity. My brother was able to find yoga um, in which I know he sent him down the, the path of holisticness, combating the depression and anxiety through mindfulness, meditation. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. So I'm gonna let him uh, actually tell his story, but I just want to let you know, um, it's about to be an awesome one, man. So stick around and you are now meeting my boy, Quentin Vinny. My God. What's going on, my brother? What's up, man? Oh. Yes, sir. On in. For a while, I thought, you know, I thought that, you know, what I was putting into my body and how I was treating my body contributed significantly to it. And, and what, I, what I've come to realize in this journey of mental health, this journey of healing, um, and, and ultimately addiction recovery um, was that the foundation of my mental health challenges are a culmination of trauma, right? You can look at studies that have been conducted on people that come from communities that we grew up in and we have a higher rate of PTSD, anxiety, depression, um, a higher rate for us than people coming back from the military. Mm -hmm. Right. When you look at societal standards, um, the primary reason is 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 oppression. Right. It's easier to accept um, a mental health diagnosis from someone who was fighting for the country versus someone who's just struggling to survive. Right. And so I think, you know, I don't think anything happens uh, by circumstance. Um, you know, I don't I don't believe in coincidences. Um I believe in divinity. And so, you know, um, I think I had to push my body to a certain level in order for my mind to catch up. Mm. Right. Because for me, I used fitness <clears throat> as an escape mechanism. Right. Like I was able to, to channel any anger, frustration, trauma, anything. I was able to channel that into the gym. Right. And when working out became work, um, and I was not treating my body well. I mean, I was consuming, you know, 1500 milligrams of caffeine every day, right? I was taking testosterone boosters. I was doing all of these things that actually shifted and altered my biochemistry um, that then made something like a panic disorder become prevalent, right? right? And so that, um, that was the foundation, right? And, you know, well, that was the perceived foundation. What really, was the foundation was the fact that, you know, I was raised by a single mother. Um, even though I went to Sudbrook and all of these other things, I grew up on Park Heights and Wiley Avenue. You know, um, my father was addicted to heroin. Uh, I was molested at seven, 
right? Like I, you know, I, I didn't have a stable home, uh, you know, until I was in elementary school. You know, my mother, we would live from, as she would call it, pillow to post, right? Just trying to figure out where we were going to be. And so, you know, then growing up in an environment full of poverty, you know, um, violence, um, experiencing just this deprivation um, and then being in schools that were dominated by people who didn't look like me. And so that was my introduction to being other, right? Recognizing that uh, other people viewed my blackness as something, as a strike against me, mm -hmm. um, you know, really having to, to, to find these ways to self-identify my own value and purpose. Um, you know, I, I found mechanisms that allowed me to escape. Um, until I wasn't able to escape anymore, right? And that was, you know, the panic attacks, the constant hospitalizations, the sleeping uh, in my car, um, in the emergency room parking lot. You know, that was the that was that was the moment where I wasn't able to escape from it anymore. Okay, that that escalated quickly. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't had had absolutely no idea that you know that transpired. Um, <clears throat> and as I would say, it's I would say I would say I don't want to say crazy because like um, it's like like now I think that there is starting to be a little bit more awareness of you know the mental health, the anxiety, and actually trying to address it. Um, and um, of course, I I had I dropped you know of course that we. You're the, the owner of equity. I mean, and you know, kind of, you know, briefly, you know, gave me an overview of it. Um, but let's 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 kind of hop over to, to equity because um, I know um, my homie not uh, not Nanak Nanagi, yeah, Nanagi, <laughs> and not, not, isn't going to be with, here with us long. Um, but um, equity, what is equity? I'm gonna let yeah. you explain what equity is. I mean, I got like so a brief synopsis yeah. of what equity is, but you know where it started, you know why it started, and um, what is Equity? Yeah, Equity is um, it's a functional tea company, right, um, that prioritizes mental health and self-care. You okay. know, um, in America, we don't really have a tea culture, right? And tea was one of the, the practices, um, you know, that helped me along the lines of my uh, recovery from prescription drug addiction. And so... The company really started out of a space of necessity. Um, you know, uh, my son was diagnosed with ADHD when he was seven. And because of my experiences in, in battling with mental health issues and prescription drug addiction and, you know, accidental drug overdoses and two failed suicide attempts and, you know, just really hitting the, the that rock bottom place. Um, I wanted to ensure that my son didn't have that same experience, right? And so, you know, we had done everything from engaging in yoga and meditation practices with him at home. He would come with me to the yoga studio, um, to pulling him out of traditional schools, putting him into a private online school. Um, we did occupational therapy, we did talk therapy, right? And he was still struggling. And so, you know, during one of his neurologist appointments, you know, I asked him, like, well, what, what, can, what else can we do, right? And she was like, have you ever tried to give him green tea uh, prior to, you know, any big test or, or school day? It was, like, you know, like, no. Like, why would we, right? Like, that ain't something we do. Like, no, they, no, we <laughs> you know, he was, he was, you know, seven, eight at the time. So, you know, the idea was, you know, green tea has a combination of L-theanine, which is a, an amino acid, uh, which is, you know, helps the brain to, to calm. And then you have that combination of caffeine which, you know, gives you that little small burst of energy. But the combination of the two would create a calm focus, especially for a person who struggles with ADHD. And so the idea was that it would mimic the uh, experience of Adderall, but without the risk of dependency or uh, any potential negative side effects. Right. And so we were like, okay, seems easy enough. Let's just go out and buy some green tea. And what I really re what I quickly realized was that a lot of the teas that were, you know, that are available on shelves in traditional retailers are very low quality, um, very minimal nutritional value, and they taste horribly. And so the mission then became like, OK, how do we find something that's high quality and make it palatable to a, a nine year old? 
And that, and that was the mission. <laughs> that's the hardest. Because yeah. right now, my son, he's, he's eight. He turns nine. It's just like, if he don't want it, he don't want it. It is like, mm. T, bro, that would that'll be it. That'll be a whole nother ball game, you know, trying to. But yeah, if you make it palatable to a, a, a nine year old, yeah. you, my friend, are a genius. <laughs> I appreciate the comment. I will take that, <laughs> you know? Um, and that was really the foundation. And once we created a blend that he liked and he enjoyed and it, that actually worked for him, I saw a change and a shift in him academically. Um, I'll never say T was the end all be all, um, but it definitely contributed. And, um, you know, my wife and I at that point were like, what other things can we solve for as a family? Mm -hmm. You know, and so we had created a multitude of tea blends that we were just drinking as a family, you know. And, and once I stepped away from my job um, because of some racial issues that I was dealing with, I uh, came up with the brilliant idea to, to make available to other families what we had created and made available to ours. And, and that was the foundation of equity. Nice. Man, that, that name is genius dog <laughs> it's just like it's genius like i was like bro like how do you get that like how is like how is that even still available like yeah man that was that was that's that was genius like equity equality and and well that's and the, the thing right here like it's it when we think about it right equity uh and equality are two words that are often thrown around that people believe are equal but they aren't mm -hmm. right like we'll never experience equality. We'd have to burn it down and build it from ground up, but we can get to a place of, of equity, right? Creating equitable resources, meeting people where they are, providing them the resources that they need to, to, to find this balance, of, this level of equilibrium in their wellness journey, in their healthcare journey, in their academic journey, in their professional journey, right? We're looking because we don't have the same starting point. Right. But with the necessary resources, we can all end up in the same place. Right. right. And so I'm looking to democratize the wellness space while also democratizing the beverage space and creating and up leveling the conversation and, and resources to mental health, because without that foundation, everything else falters. Absolutely. Um, so you have a friend. Nan again, nan again. I keep saying, I keep having to stop. Say nan, nan <laughs> again. You hear your friend nan again here, um, and come to find out, nan again. She 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 uh, represents Baltimore, but she's from DC. I had to, had to put that in there. She's from DC. <laughs> she represents Baltimore to the fullest. Um, but I have not asked nan again too much of anything, um, so I'm not exactly. Um, but I, I know that you're here to, I guess, give us a, a I'll say your, your, your thoughts on, on equity, because is it, is, is dealing with her, um, how, how is, how has equity affected you? Well, uh, was it, I'll let you, I can, I can cut this. For yeah, you, yeah, but, of course. Um, I, I think too, like, you know, one of the things that I think is, is pertinent um, is, you know, um, Nandigi has a, a mental health story or journey of her own that she want to share. But I also think it's important to point out that she's not just a friend of mine. She is the founder and creator of a brand and business that during COVID um, really took care of our community, okay. you know, and provided something that was not readily available um, in traditional stores and really like sacrificed a lot to make it available to those that look like us. And I, I would love for, for you to share, you know, the, the journey and the story of, of, of Lord Tush and the, how it started, the mission, vision, um, and, and also like what you did during COVID, because I think that was, that was one of the most selfless acts. And that was how I found out about you, um, just being that that person of, of service and community. Thanks for that beautiful intro. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm like the founder of the Lore Company 
And under the Lord Company, we have brands like Lord Tush and Asachi. And the goal of Lord Tush, I mean, L O R. Like, oh yeah, like, ah, Lord, like, like Baltimore, like, like no, Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> like my, my, uh, my dog's name on um on Instagram is Laura, Laura Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Pablo the fuck versus L.I. I was like, why you do or like it's a Baltimore thing? You wouldn't get yeah. it. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, so like our, our overall goal is just to create more sustainable products that are in the you know household space and in you know the fashion space. But we started out with Lord Touch, which is a uh, bamboo toilet paper. Oh, and okay. so during the pandemic we were we were getting ready to launch we were so excited we had all the like material we was like oh yeah we better do this we about to make this company we about to reach the people we really want to reach and then everything got shut down uh every grocery store you went to there was no toilet paper people were on the corner selling toilet papers it was really bad and we're here ready to launch and it was like i don't feel right selling something that we people need and taking advantage of them in that point. So I was just like, yo, let's just give it away. Let's just give away our entire inventory. So I quickly created a website that had a form on there that just asked for your name, your information, like if you're immunocompromised, if you lost a job, just to kind of like filter out people who just want free stuff, free stuff. And it started spreading on social media and then we started getting like um, entry after entry after entry. So we all hopped in our cars and drove all around Baltimore City just giving out free toilet paper. And um, that, it, it felt like the easiest thing to do. It wasn't even much of convincing. It was just like, yo, let's just do the right thing. And that was the right thing. And it was crazy us driving up to people's houses and them like either being super excited or like super thankful that some random stranger on the internet just delivered them toilet paper that they were looking for. And we ended up going to a lot of senior homes, mm -hmm. a lot of um, people who weren't there financially, a lot of people who lost jobs. And like, we just wanted to, to support where we could because you know, it's, it's important to look out for not only people that look like me, but for anyone who's experiencing any kind of hardship. Right. So um, yeah, we still to this day, you know, donate toilet paper, um, we're not as public about it because, you know, it's, I think, I just want to do the good. Right. So that's what we've been doing. And as a business, you got to make money. Oh, yeah, we got to make money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely good to kind of have that option for people that, you know, in need that, you know, and I'm sure it was a filtration process, you know, for to get there. So. Yeah. But that's dope. Yeah, Don't thank touch. you. Don't <laughs> touch. Yeah. Had to give me some. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty dope. Um, so, I guess my my question, um, how do I piggyback off of that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, but, you know, um, right? You know, like the foundation of everything that we do at Equity is 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 really geared and centered toward um, mental health, right? And up leveling um, the conversation as as we believe that you know a shared story. Uh, or shared experience can be a saved life, um, especially when you look at those in our community that are still finding the space and comfort and vulnerability uh, to share their story. So, you know, this is a part of, you know, of, of this dialogue and conversation that I, too, am unaware of, um, you know, but I would love for you to share a, a, a story uh, or an experience that, that you've personally had and and what that challenge was, how it impacted your mental health, but then how were you able to to find a place uh, to not necessarily overcome, but thrive in the face of uh, whatever that, that mental health challenge was? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think for me, pinpointing, it might be a little bit hard, mm -hmm. but what I wanted to share was like, similar to like your upbringing, right? You know, I grew up poor, homeless, getting evicted left and right, first generation Nigerian, parents trying to make it work after coming here, you know, it, it, all that kind of experience. Um, and the thing is like, I never stopped to work through it. Hmm. So from, from first time experiencing up till I met you, 
I've just been nonstop going after going and going and going and going and going. And it wasn't until I, I actually met you and we started talking that I really stop and try to reflect on my own and work through my own stuff, mm. right? Um, and you sharing your story and me researching and just understanding and trying to be more vulnerable to like myself and then like my family, you know, I realize I've been struggling with a lot of things. I feel like I have PTSD from the experience I had growing up. I always have like anxiety. Like it, I'm just now comfortable talking <laughs> even mm -hmm. on camera, like just, ex just expressing myself. Um, but like overcoming that, is it's a mo is a recent thing mm. and you know things that i've been doing um to overcome that is i started fasting and i know i bought your tea randomly at hotel revival and when i when you fast i'm trying not to eat anything so it's just liquid so i'm over here drinking green tea i didn't know i like bitter stuff like i'm nigerian we have bitter cola but like i'm a kid i want starburst but i'm over here just drinking green tea with no nothing added to it Right. Because I don't want to break my fast, but like in the, and I'm looking inward, trying to understand my feelings, trying to understand everything about me to make myself a better person. Because, you know, I have anger issues. I have I have a lot of issues <laughs> and I hide it well, like I'm high functioning. That's we have no choice but to function in whatever environment we are in. We can't take a break. We can't stop. Like we have to keep going. But I'm trying every day to like take time to really like work through everything that I've been through. Cause you know, I, I couldn't keep going like that. Like I, like as a founder, you know, we're taking on, I'm taking on an added responsibility, not only like to myself and you know, the people with my employees, but also to my customers, right? I'm trying to get this message out that we should be using better alternative sources and materials to like keep our planet here for our children. Or I don't know how long this is going to last, but we're doing good. The ozone healing. That's <laughs> Go us. That's pretty cool. We're doing it. Um, but like those are the things that like, you know, I think about and it's heavy. Right. And I and I and I can't move if I'm weighed down. So. Um, so, yeah, I've been just trying to really like find my inner peace, um, work through all my experiences so I can be like the best version of me and I can then help more people because you can't help anyone if you can't help yourself. So, um, you know, that's where I am right now in the journey, just, just trying to breathe, I should say, um, and really like make something happen um, for the planet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So I, I would say that, um, just knowing like, as far as like the the constant, you know, for me having the morning rituals and, and those types of things um, in, in this journey, just kind of trying to find that that piece. Um, equity has become like your, your go-to, mm -hmm. wake up in the morning <laughs> for equity in your cup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I even text Quentin photos. Like he was said he was sick the other day and I was like, yo, you should drink this drink. <laughs> <laughs> his drink. <laughs> hey, bro, let's try this. <laughs> Just be brave now. This dude is, yo, this joint is, yo, this joint be hooking me up, yo. Like, yo, she legit did that. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but like, touche. Touche. Like, yo, this tea is the bomb. Yo, you just try it. You just try it. Especially you sick. You feeling a little down? Mm. <laughs> That's, what's yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely, I definitely feel the the, the energy, um, in, in the transition. So I, I fast as well. Mm -hmm. um, so no, no ill effects or making you want to like feel like you're nauseous or anything like that. Like it's just smooth and like just, it. Like what is it? What is the taste like? What does the, the taste like? Uh, like for for me for fasting, yeah. Um, I um recently I did like in the span of like a week and a half I did three twenty four hour fasts mm -hmm. that I didn't know I didn't I just forgot to eat like it wasn't a thing where <laughs> wait I, let me rephrase that <laughs> no, because I have food I'm good now <laughs> I forgot to eat like. 
Wait, no. So like, um, that's a real thing. I'm gonna ask the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm looking at time. Like, I got, I got like two hours and sixteen minutes, thirty two seconds. <laughs> it's, just, it's just becoming like for fasting for me. It's just been like becoming like you know second nature, mm -hmm. right? And just like giving my body time to heal. Right, because I have like, you know, environmental allergies, I have food allergies, right? So my body is in a constant like state of inflammation, mm -hmm. right? So the, the more I fast, the better it is for my body to reset. So like, I, I'll just, since I've been just fasting since November last year, I've just been going and I've been recently just doing like 24 hour fast at a time. And it's just been, it's like, I'm aware of the time, but I realized that maybe I've been overeating. Maybe I've been doing things like I've been like, that's how I've been coping. I've been coping by, you know, just snacking nonstop. And I have an incredible sweet tooth. <laughs> and um, so I, so doing all this fasting, like it's, it's, I feel like I've been more energized doing it. Right. I feel, I feel, I feel good. I feel great. You know, I still make sure I have a, a good window for me to get my, um, my food in and, and you know, the nutritional value that I need to keep my body going, but um, it, it feels life-changing. Right. It's a funny thing, is I've, I've historically fasted, especially like when I got into bodybuilding, so to say, um, it was the easier, the easier way, easier thing for me to do to kind of keep those, those calories kind of at bay. You know, you got all day to eat, it's like, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna snack on this, snack on that, versus like, when it's time for me to eat, it's like, I don't need something good. <laughs> I don't need something good. You know what I mean? Like, and just it's either like one meal a day, or it's going, you know, within a four hour four hour window for me. And for sure, like, it gives your body an opportunity to kind of reset, mm -hmm. or kind of not to be always digesting something. You know what I mean? But the actually shelling the nutrients to where it needs to go versus like, oh man, something else. You know what I mean? Like you're just compacting this on top of each other. So I'm a I'm a huge advocate of of fasting and and green tea is definitely um, my go-to. Um, and uh, apparently, I've been drinking the low-quality stuff. <laughs> I, ain't so, so I, ain't, the, I ain't gonna judge you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, but you know, man, I got equity now, and I'm I'm, I'm in full support. So. Uh, equity from here on out. No more Bigelow. Sorry, Bigelow. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, so equity is definitely, um, so is, is this technically equity? I mean, this, this is, see, so this is, this is the loose leaf, loose leaf bird. <laughs> is yeah. this the, this the real, this, this, the unpackaged equity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I appreciate the bougie, uh, <laughs> Hold on, really. I need to change hands, so my It was too out. good, so I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you know, Equity, we, you know, we started off as a loose leaf company and realized that there's still an apprehension for a lot of people to make a loose leaf cup of tea. Um, and all of our teas are, we have a proprietary blend, so... You know, between my wife and I, we've created every blend that we have and, and that we offer. Um, and um, we we made that shift in transition uh, toward the, the middle uh, part of last year to really taking the guesswork out of it for consumers um, and making a high quality cup of tea in a can. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's more accessible. It's it's a grab and go type of thing. Um, what you are drinking there is a, a a very high quality Japanese loose leaf single origin tea um, that we source directly from Japan. Um, it's a gaiokuro, um, and uh, it's um, gaiokuro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's a very high quality shade grown, um, highly nutrient dense you know green tea. So. Um, in addition to our proprietary blends, you know, I have a pretty expansive uh, tea collection. So, you know, we drink a, a multitude of different types of teas, whether it's our own blends or it's single origin, um, you know, so yeah. Okay, single origin. Explain that to me. A single origin uh, means that um, it doesn't have any other ingredients in it, right? So like our, our green tea, um, you know, in, in the can is, is green tea with lavender, lemon verbena, lemongrass, 
um, and ashwagandha, you know, that's a blend, right? And so that's a blend of, of different teas and botanicals from different places. Single origin means that it comes from one specific place, one farm. It's untouched. It's, you know, literally straight from the farm, you know, into the package, into the ho- into the home, you know. Um, so, you know. Let <laughs> <laughs> me pull my peggy up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's like a fifteen dollar cup of tea. <laughs> and I'm all, almost out of tea, so yeah. I was listening to um, Richard Branson earlier today. I don't know you got about so. And um, he talked about creating things out of necessity. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he started Virgin Airlines because American Airlines canceled his flight. Like he mm-hmm. literally started it in like twenty minutes or something. Like he went to the back, you know, charter the plane and. You know, all the people that can had was on the flight to cancel, booked them to the flight and started Virgin Airlines. I'm like, wow. um, but for you to create um, this tea company out of the necessity of, you know, getting the, the top quality products, um, the top quality resources and products for for your son, you know, to um, to take that that edge off of a lot of times. I think I know I know. I mean, we put so many of these um, processed um, products in our bodies and we're, people don't realize we're, as we are all hormonal creatures and body can't, if you can't read it, your body can't recognize it. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where it's like, let's say a computer, like you're putting a code into your body in which it doesn't recognize. So, you know, I mean, I grew up acne skin. I grew up with, um, or even um even as far as like let's say weight for instance like i and that's why i fast as well like i feel as though like a lot of things we've been taught like okay you need to eat breakfast lunch and dinner like why do we need to eat breakfast like, versus eating when you're actually hungry when your body actually needs the, the fuel um but it's like oh the prescription of two thousand calories a month for who like i'm high i'm i'm super active like two two thousand calories I'm starving, you know what I mean? If if that's if and but that's and we've trained ourselves to eat all these times. Like, I'm hungry in the morning. Know your body's telling you that you're hungry when the reality is you're you've conditioned yourself to 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 fulfill this void, you know, because of a hunger pain. You know what I mean? So um so I I I, I took my hat off to you for actually um taking action on, you know, creating a product and the necessity of um, creating something for, like, that will aid in your, your son's um, productivity, you know, and, and healing and um, and all that. So, Thank amen. You. Thank um, you, brother. So, awesome, awesome, awesome talk with my boy, Quentin Vinny. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cut it short, um, but it just goes to show, like, I mean, I, I'm super proud of that dude, man, was, just continues to just, just move forward and to create in, in the midst of the adversity, the adversities of life. A lot of times, like, we allow ourselves to, to get so, so, so downtrodden and and under what what we're up against, when the issues in which you're dealing with, um, it's very well could possibly be the opportunity to create, or the opportunity to to be a beacon of light for someone else. I mean, there's so many, so many people out here that could possibly use a word of advice. Um, if you see there's a need, like fulfill it. You know what I mean? Fulfill that need. Uh, you never know how many other people use it thus equity you know he he saw a need you know his son uh, needed needed something that was not prescription drugs going more the organic way of uh, the way that things are intended to be and creating something that will now make make this man a millionaire dog is possibly billionaire like it's, it's the, the sky is the limit with with this, I mean, his, the message alone and the direction and the purpose 
of this product was awesome, man. And I, I'm, I'm super proud to know that that's my guy, you know what I mean? And I just can't wait. I can't wait to for the for the world to find out about not only him but about equity. Um, and even with myself, always being being conscious of what it is that we we put into our bodies, making conscious transitions, conscious decisions uh, to do the better thing, to do what's I would say what's appropriate, but what's best for you. A lot of times we, you know, okay, I'm I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat this because I'm hungry. When honestly, we should be should be leaning more towards. Let me eat this because my this is what my body needs. Let me let me eat this because this is like it's nourishing to my body. It's nourishing to my soul. Is it's not causing. It won't cause things down the line. Like I can read the ingredients on this. Like I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. So yes, just moving forward, just being being aware. Let's, let's start using our issues or our, the problems as opportunity to create a solution. So if you don't get nothing else from me or from this interview today, uh, get out there and think about it. Think about what it is that you have issues with. So go ahead and shoot on over to equity.com, E-Q-I-T-E-A.com, the equity company. Um, pick you up some, Pick you up some of the cans and let me know what you think.